Perfect. So this is how to make money on YouTube for business and pay attention to how to make money on YouTube to, for business, not how to go viral on on YouTube, because I don't know how to do that. But I do know how to make money. What I'd love to ask you is, what do you think YouTube is for in the comments? If I, if I get in, And when I say what is it for, you can say what your opinion of it is, uh, anything like that. Feel free to just drop it in the chat and I'll come back to you later on but I, I will tell you this is what a lot of people think it is and hopefully you recognize one of those things in your in your preconceptions of YouTube it might be funny cat videos it might be music with Swifty in the middle there excuse me I've got a bit of a cough so it will appear it's involuntary it might be gaming couple of gaming ones in there and there's a little bit of a hint there that starting a business on YouTube at the top is what I think it is for how to do funny stuff, good tutorial videos, digging out old tunes. Love that one. What YouTube is definitely not, though. Uh, sorry to tell you if you do this, but it's not a place to uh, store Zoom calls. Uh, I googled this. I found these screenshots of people that just took their Zoom calls and stuck them on YouTube. Oh, I've got a YouTube channel now because I stuck my Zoom calls on there. Actually, that's not a strategy at all. It's just a dump and run strategy. And it's not going to help at all. So it's also not just for kids and gamers. A lot of the objections I get from people is, oh, well, you know, I don't do this YouTube. I don't do that TikTok stuff. It's just for kids, right? It's just those young people, which is a load of rubbish. So let's just move that out of the way. And I can prove that to you as well. If, you, if you're like, oh, well, I only ever see kids on YouTube or TikTok, just come to me and I'll give you some examples. But it's a serious business tool that can blow up, right? And I wanted to use Erica example. And I use Erica as an example because I watched this happen to her. Oh, another just slight different example that I saw yesterday. I've got an event called TubeFest. I'll talk about it right at the end. One of my speakers called Austin, he moved his YouTube channel, his audience from TikTok to YouTube. He had a big audience on TikTok. He moved it to YouTube. He went from 5,000 sus subscribers to 100,000 in three days. Three days, right? That's what you can do when you've got an audience. But if you don't have an audience like Erica didn't, then as long as you are intentional, and I'm sure Pete and Sarah and the team talk about being intentional with your business stuff anyway, as long as you're intentional, you can grow a YouTube ch uh, channel really quickly. And But I will say it's a, a unicorn thing here. Like Erica is a bit of a unicorn. She said, I'm going to quit my $250,000 uh, uh, a year lawyer job to become a YouTuber. Can you imagine her parents or anyone else? Why is it telling me to unmute myself? I am unmuted. No, we now. can hear you. We can hear uh, you. Good, good. Imagine telling your parents that you're quitting your $250,000 a year job to become a YouTuber. I would imagine that went down really well. But she was intentional. She said at the start of her journey, I, I kind of caught wind of her about 10,000 subscribers in. And she said, I'm going to be on Business Insider, Washington Post, U US News. I'm I'm starting this channel and I'm going to get to that destination. And she got there. And, and in fairness, when unicorns like this happen, sometimes they get a little bit of a hand. And in Erica's, what happened with her is that she helped, bis uh, helped American citizens understand stimulus checks. It was like bounce back loans, that kind of thing in the US. The American government released the uh, legal document. You know, legal documents are always like ridiculous documents. Nobody understands. She made it really simple. YouTube then put her on the homepage. When you get on YouTube's homepage, it's like gold, you know, you just land there and all of a sudden you get all these sub subscribers. And so I think that was the thing that I saw that really accelerated her journey. But also I will say she was very st strategic with how she decided she was going to do these things. She's now got a huge TikTok audience. She focuses on personal finance uh, and various other things as well. But Matt, we're not Erica. We have not started yet. Maybe you don't understand what this YouTube thing is for and how it will help you out. Uh, I'm going to break it down into these five things. It, yes, even in this small amount of time we've got, we're going to go through these in, in a little bit of detail. And hopefully what you'll be able to see in these five A's is, is, is you can recognize, actually, yes, that's the thing that I need right now. Uh, that's why I need to get on YouTube. And I know you can read, so I'm not going to read those bullet points. Otherwise, it's deaf by PowerPoint, right? We don't want to do that. So... If you've been in business, in fact, I'll ask you the question as we've got live people here. You can tell I recorded it, pre-recorded it yesterday when I was doing a, a run through. Live people then, how many of you in business, well, how long have you been in business? Let's start with that, in, in, in years. And if you're just a startup and you've just started, you can say like one month if you want. But how long have you been in business? 
And okay, great. Some some years, five years, twenty five years. Jesus, Kelly. Okay, so and how many times have you been approached by somebody in your inbox that said, "I can get you to the top of Google," right? SEO person, right? So, I, and I know the answer to this. <laughs> Thirty thousand, three hundred thousand. Right. Okay. So when anyone ever says to you, I can get you to the top of Google, just know they're liars, right? Because there's no way you can guarantee such a thing. But there is some strategies you can do. You could pay to be at the top of Google. You can get sponsors. Ad. The ads people will try and guarantee it, even though they can't guarantee it either. But what I will say is, what if you could get to the top of Google organically, even when there's 102 million results, Right. And and as you can see, I'm, I've not kept it a secret. You can see me at the top of Google here. This changes often. The videos bit changes often. And, and now Google prioritizes paid ads at, at the top of this as well. But I just want you to consider all the questions your customers ask you. If you answered them in video and put them on YouTube, do you think they're searching for those things as well? And what would happen if you showed up at the top of Google with a video answering that question? I just want you to think about that for a second. And that's what I did here. So this is the video I hate the most. <laughs> have you been looking at my inbox? I like that video. <laughs> I used to have a T-shirt. I was in IT. I used to have a T-shirt that said, I re read your email. I'm I'm, su I'm <laughs> such a cool IT guy. You can tell. Proper nerd. Anyway, audience example. So this is the video I hate the most. Whatever you do on YouTube, whatever you do online, your most viral piece of content will be the thing you hate the most. So just know that, accept it as a fact now. This video was a question that people would ask me often. We were doing Facebook Live challenges at the time and they would say, Matt, I've started my Facebook Live, but I'm sideways. How do I fix it? So after answering that question 20, 30, 40 times in my inbox, saying the same thing, sometimes copy and pasting it from someone I'd said before, I created a 90 second video and 95 seconds and it had very few views, but it was just the people I was sending to answer the question. I was so bored of answering that question. And then, of course, COVID happened. And what happened? All of those people that said, I don't care about video. I'm never going to do it. I hate video. Suddenly went, how do I do a video? I'm, I'm, I can't see anyone now. Can you tell me? Can you help me out? And of course, you can see the little spike. It's not like a crazy spike. I've not gone viral in, in, in some senses. But this fundamentally changed the traffic to my YouTube channel. And we're going to talk about assets uh, in, a, in a minute anyway. But I want you to think about this. How many um, how many times with the content you create online do you get to wait four years, three years before your video takes off? I don't think there's any other platform. TikTok potentially might be changing that, but I still think it's too quick and too short a form of platform to have the same effect that YouTube does. When I talked about Austin at the start and why I talked about Austin, the speaker that went from free to uh, 5,000 to 100,000, as he said he posted something something like 600 videos before that moment that he went from five to a hundred thousand. And it was just that one moment in time, one of his videos finally took off, right? It doesn't, you don't have to wait that long, by the way. And it, and that's only if your goal is to, is to go viral. But, but I promise you that kind of impact that has on your business leads and sales wise is huge. So I've got 41,000 views on my 95 second video. Uh, 640 hours of time, of human beings' time, they've watched this awful 90-second video, and it's added 239. 239 people said, this is a crap video, but I really want to see more of them. Uh, so it worked really well for my audience point of view, right? Authority then. So there's a couple of ways to get authority. You can be a public speaker. Even if you're a shit public speaker, people still give you a bit of authority status. You can be a author, so you can write a book. You can even write shit books and you can still say I'm an author and people will give you authority status. Once read a book in the first 10 pages was intentionally blank. It was only 60 pages long. I was like, this is not a book. It's a pamphlet. And you can have a YouTube channel, right? A YouTube channel. Why do you think people get authority status from a YouTube channel? Can you an answer that in, in the comments? If someone said to you, I've got a YouTube channel, what would you think of them? Now, I'm scared of these answers. <laughs> scared of these answers because you might think, oh, they're not proper business people. But for me, here's my perception. And I might have a bit of a, a strange view of the world. But for me, a YouTube channel is a Netflix channel, right? It's somebody saying, I've taken the time out of my business to create these sign what I call signature videos. And I've put them on a channel ready for you to consume for free. 
right? And there might be, it's like like a podcast. A podcast is another authority one as well. It's slightly different, but we'll, maybe we'll talk about that later as well. Okay, so let's talk about the authority status. I will take a look at these comments later. This is someone asking for um, some help, <coughs> help, right? And I'm in the group with her, but obviously I've not done a good enough job of, of making her know who I am yet. Uh, but I have done a good enough job with Malcolm and Martin because they tagged me in this post. And I was a little bit desperate for subscribers at the time. So I probably wouldn't do it like this anymore. Uh, you can have a read of this if you want. So I wouldn't ask them to subscribe. What I would do is just answer the question and send them to the video. Now, what happens, again, I'll ask another question to you. Sorry, I'm just desperate to ask you questions because you're here in, in real life. Who's been tagged in a post before like this? on the socials can you let me know that whether it's on facebook linkedin just let me know if you've been tagged yeah a few people yeah wicked right now what happens when you're tagged and i noticed there was a photographer in here and a few other like common more taggable people so if you if you want to if you want to go go viral on any platform ask who do you know who's a photographer oh my god it's like gold you'll get 100 people tagged in there but the, so the way to stand out is by being tagged. Great. People do know who you are. So you're doing something right in your marketing. But then once you comment with your YouTube video, you take all of the attention away from everybody else. And they're suddenly watching your Netflix channel. So imagine the, the imagine you're in a room of 100 people and someone asks for someone in your industry and you're all doing the same thing. And then you get to tell everyone else to piss off whilst you have a one to one conversation with this person and not only that but you're constantly selling at them because you're they're watching all your videos right imagine the authority status that you get there i hope you keep it up guys I hope you keep it up asset so the other thing i like about youtube is it's an asset library uh the the problem that ha people have a lot of the time when they think about youtube is they think about oh my god it's another piece of content that i've got to create I already am crap at creating content. It's so frustrating having to create all this content. And now you want me to create a long form piece of content for YouTube. I have a strategy where we take one video, YouTube video, and we create 49 pieces of content from that, right? And I'm going to talk about that later on as well. But imagine each of the videos you put on YouTube is an asset for your business. It's something that you're proud of. It's something when, they, when people ask you those common questions that I talked about earlier, you're prepared to go, oh, don't worry, I've got the perfect answer for that. Go and watch my video, right? You're you're sending your audience to those videos. That's why it's an asset library. It's great for short-term assets. So I've done challenges, events, answering questions, as I mentioned, although I'd, I'd say think they're long-term as well, and live videos. But the reason why they're long-term is that they keep on giving. Remember, this video is five years old. It's still the video that brings the most traffic to my YouTube channel. I'm still trying to beat it. And it's searchable. If anyone's ever tried to find a, an old video they did on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, it is so hard to find those videos. But you go onto YouTube, you go to YouTube Studio, you can search your own videos, find them in an instant. So when someone asks me for something or asks me a question where I know I've got a video answer, I go in and let me know what we're doing for time as well, Pete, please. I go in there, I search for the video, I copy the link to it and I post it and it takes me seconds. Okay, fine, good. Okay, so that's Asset Library. Oh, and this one, everybody knows know, like, and trust, right? This is not a new concept to anyone. I can see when I ask you the question about how long you've been in business, a long time. So we get the concept of know, like, and trust. A lot of people, depending on who you speak to and what time of the year it is and which way the wind blows, people will tell you how many touch points it will take to convert somebody. And actually, the truth is nobody fucking knows, right? <laughs> it could be one. It could be a, a million. But the fact of the matter is it takes a number of touch points uh, for most people, for them to trust, know you, like you, and trust you. You can accelerate that in YouTube by sending them to your Netflix channel. I've discussed this already. But there's a little hack that you've got in that a lot of people, what they fail to do on their YouTube channel, and I, they're like ideal clients for me, is I'll go to their YouTube channel. They've got one playlist called Videos. It's the default playlist. I know they're an ideal client because I know I can strategically help them design their channel, right? And one of the things I get them to do is create playlists. And you think a playlist is for you, but actually it's for your for your viewers and it's for your potential clients. So I created this video, a uh, playlist. This one's called YouTube Videos in 2021. Clearly, I didn't know what I was doing at the time because it's a crap name for a playlist. But I might have one that's called Client Questions. It might be something that is is directly related to what, what the, the actual stuff is in the playlist. 
I send them to a video on that playlist. And what happens is it keeps them watching your videos. If anyone uses YouTube here, just looking at the crap names I have in my mind, a playlist too, good. Uh, if anybody goes on YouTube, when you watch a YouTube video, once it's finished, it will say to you, here's a suggested video that you might like. Uh, YouTube and Google know you more than you know yourself. They use an AI to now figure out what you want to watch, all that kind of good stuff. And so it will just suggest something that it thinks you will watch that will keep you on the platform. So that's no good, really, if you're trying to convert a customer. So instead, we send them to a playlist like this, and then it suggests the next video. It will just keep running through this playlist. It's great for building your watch time as well, by the way, because if somebody forgets to close the tab, it just keeps keeps rolling. <laughs> it's a slight little hack as well. But imagine somebody watches three or four videos. Like you guys, a lot of you guys don't know me. Obviously, Pete and Dave, we've met. Sarah have had a conversation. But for the rest of you, you don't know me. So if you went now to go to my YouTube channel, in five to ten videos time, you're gonna you're gonna do one or two one of two things. You're gonna hate the way this Midlands working class Englishman speaks, or you're gonna love what I teach and you're gonna go, I wish I could be more close to Matt. I wish I could get more knowledge from Matt. I wish I could work with Matt. Right? It's one of those two things. For most people, we're all judgmental people, whether we like it or not. Right? So we this is how you would accelerate that whole process. And then added value. So I did mention that this before. I always jump ahead. I've got a strategy with these two things that I've got called the content repurposing school and content repurposing framework and the content promotion framework. And basically what we do is we take one YouTube video, we repurpose that up to 49 times. It's like, I say like 40 plus times. And then we, using what you can see on the screen, this is my spreadsheet, the promotion framework. We then promote that across the platforms. And the great news is I don't do any of this work. So I, my job really is to film my podcast every week. I give that to my VA. We have this very sensible standard operating procedure built process for the content promotion framework. And she goes and does the rest. So it takes me about 20 minutes a week to do my one video and to create all of this content. And then everyone, someone else manages it. it. Cost me a couple of hundred dollars a month. Okay. And imagine you did that once, one video per week for a year, you'd have 2,500 pieces of content. That's insane. That's Gary V level insane. Okay. It's probably nowhere near Gary V, but it's, it's insane, right? You'd be relentless. If any of you are not posting a piece of content or you're struggling to post a piece of content per day, this would allow you to post like 10 pieces of content per day. And if anyone's thinking, oh, that's too much, my fam fr friends and family would hate it. They're not your customers, so don't don't worry about them. Okay, so so we're, how to make money on YouTube? That's the the good stuff, right? So I just co cover three case studies that I've got for you, just to show you how to make money. If you if you Google that question, this is the answer you will get. This is the requirement for uh, monetization: five hundred subscribers, three thousand public watch hours. Actually, it gives you opens up a few few things at that level. This is the real level that you want: a thousand subscribers, four thousand pu public watch hours, and you get uh, money from ads. The only problem with money from ads is you have to be a viral sensation to make a, a reasonable amount of money from ads. So when I speak to professional YouTubers, yes, there is such a thing. This accounts for like 5% of their revenue, unless you missed a beast. Um, and a great example of that is this guy, right? So this is a magician. He had 8,000 subscribers when I met him. He had no other monetization strategy other than ads. So he was publishing a video every single day, which is insane. And he was making 1,200 pounds a month. It took him two years to get to this point. I'd say that's a, a bad investment. Actually, mm, you get a compounding effect over these things, right? The, the great thing about YouTube is it constantly builds on what you've done. So even after two years, if his videos were terrible, he should probably be getting that point if he's done a video a day. But no other monetization strategy. He's not thought strategically about what he wants to do with that audience that he's built. He's had 1.7 million sets of eyeballs on his content, but he's only making 1,200 pounds. These are some of the revenue streams that I think you should be thinking about with YouTube. It, um, it, if anybody sees any of this and they're like, I don't know what, what that thing is, please let me know in the comments and I'll just tell you, give you an example of, of one of those things. But great ones you can do immediately. If you've got done for you services, so you're a service provider, you can immediately send people to your service provider um, pages, your sales pages. 
digital products, affiliate revenue courses. Oh my God, they're so easy to move people to. I also did, I started a Canva, a Canva YouTube channel. I did three or four videos on it and then Canva legal team shut me down because I said the word Canva, which apparently you're not allowed to do that if you're advocating their product. And I moved people to a Facebook group. So and the whole purpose of setting up that channel was I wanted to prove that it was an industry that I was not in, in a, a platform that I was not using. If I created good, good video content and I had the call to action to move people to a Facebook group, would they move? And we got a, a few thousand views and we got something like 150, 200 people in the Facebook group. If I go back to it, I bet this, 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 you know, it's still there doing its thing. So I proved that that works. So if you're running a challenge or some event or something like that, and you want to get people into a Facebook group, that is a strategy that can work too. Of course, I'll use myself as a king, uh, the king of videos as a case study. This is my channel. At the time, I had 1,300 subscribers. I've got less than 3,000 now. But if I told you that with a less than 1,000 subscribers, I made over £40,000 from my channel, would you think it's worth investing some time and money in a YouTube channel? With less than a thousand subscribers, about 750 I had at the time, I got a brand deal to create four videos. I charged them $750 for each video because my day rate at the time when I was contracting was 500 pound a day. So I charged them what it would take me to create a day's worth, you know, a day's worth of content, even though it's just a one video. Probably took me about an hour and a half. Um, but that was my uh, my fee at the time. And I made, so I got those four videos done and we made what was $3,000. And then they gave me a $5,000 a month deal to manage their community. We grew their communities for 4,000 people in the eight months that I worked with them. So, so 40,000 is what I got over that time for that one customer. And that's not talking about any of my other revenue streams. So I had a membership, a YouTube for business membership at the time. We did uh, done for you services. So we had a couple of ed editing products that we use, had some courses and affiliate stuff as well. So not talking about any of that revenue. This was just the one revenue stream. Another case study, if you're thinking, well, Matt, I don't want to do all of that stuff. It sounds like a lot of effort. This is a an online coach who had 150 subscribers. So next, and I could get that. You could get that this weekend, by the way. I've got a strategy that would show you how to do that. So, so quick. So she had no subscribers, really. 2,000 views. Again, you could probably do that just by landing on TikTok and doing being in 200 view jail. You could get to 2,300 views really easily. But she landed a coaching client who, who was just a troll, someone that left a comment saying your videos were shit or something like that. We responded with kindness, as we should always do, you know, kill them with kindness. And actually, it turns out he was just jealous of our videos. And she she was a coach that coach coaches, one of those people. And so she got him as a client. That's it worth six thousand pounds. There are 150 subscribers. That is insane. If you think about the views, the way I look about like this, she's been paid three pounds for every view on her channel. Which, you know, imagine the guy that 1.7 million views before. Imagine if he did the same thing. Uh, it wouldn't be £1,200 a month. So hopefully, you know, YouTube is for business. Got a couple of things for you just really quickly. I won't bang on about these too much. If you're interested in YouTube, you think, yes, YouTube is for me. I should, But I just have no idea how to get started. This little scorecard here will show you, give you a score out of 100. If you get between 60 and 70, you're perfect for the accelerator that I'm talking about second. That's most people that join the accelerator in that um, ballpark. If it's less than 60, then you've just got something else that you need to do. It might be working on your confidence. It might be getting a bit more gear or whatever. If you get above 70, then, you know, you, you probably don't actually need me. You probably could do it uh, yourself. The only product I have to sell is my YouTube accelerator. It's a 12 month program. You can't do YouTube in less than 12 months. Like people that start things and do it for two months and then expect results is ridiculous. It's a 12 month program. If you pay in full, um, I do a four week incubator where I go through this flywheel, which is planning, producing, publishing, promotion. We do that every quarter. So we go through this circle every quarter. That's why it's a everlasting one because you have to do it every quarter. You have to plan, produce, publish, and promote your content. And then uh, lastly is my conference, which is happening May 23rd. So this is recorded. If you're watching it after May 23rd, it's not there anymore, uh, but the wait list will be there for the next one. And we've got these great speakers. And, and, and the great thing about this is if you look at these speakers, I think I don't really recognize anyone on here. A great example is Austin has 600,000 subscribers on every platform. He's the guy that went from... 5,000 to 100,000. Justin Evans did a video every year 
for three years on YouTube and got nowhere. And then he started unboxing his kids' toys and got to 2 million subscribers. Robin Waite was on Ali Abdul's podcast recently and got he got like 150,000 pounds worth of business off the back of that. Uh, Pete and Sarah, if you want to make money, get on Ali Abdul's <laughs> podcast, like any way you can to get there. Because the it, things that Ali says, go and buy, people buy, which is another powerful thing about YouTube. And that's it. If you've enjoyed the session, grab yourself the scorecard, go and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope that's been really valuable. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I never take that for granted. And thank you for you guys for allowing me into here and to rant at you for 20, 20 odd minutes. Uh, thanks so much. That was amazing. 